Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here today. This video is going to be a short one, I hope. This is just a reiteration of something that I talked about on the podcast this week. And I know some of you that watch the videos don't watch the podcast, and some of you that listen to the podcast don't watch the videos, so I try to um, echo the sentiments so that um, everybody is getting the information, if that makes sense. So I wanna talk a little bit about surrender and flow, what that means, what it looks like, why it's beneficial. And I do get into it more on the podcast um, because those are longer than the video episodes. And I wanted to explain the reason that I talk so much the way that I do, I use um, the ATS method is something I've talked about before. And this one I'm gonna talk about the four Ps is because I personally learn I learn well to music. I can memorize things very well to music and I learn with mnemonic devices. That's just how my brain works. So that is how I teach. So surrender and flow is something that I think m most people are not even able to do until they've matured to a certain level. Um, and for me, that looks like not being reactive in my life, not reacting every, every time somebody says something ugly to me, not responding every time uh, something bad happens with an equally negative uh, temperament or um, tirade, you know, saying ugly things or, or just saying, well, you know, my whole day is ruined, that kind of thing. I have really learned to temper myself this year. I don't always do well at it, but I'm getting better at it. And I am proud of myself um, because for me, it's definitely been a challenge. And what I have learned to do instead, and, and what this goes along with a daily me, uh, meditation practice. I meditate every morning and I meditate every night before I go to sleep. Sometimes if I'm really tired, I will just like compromise with myself and just sit up in the bed and do it right there. Um, otherwise, I like to get in the floor and face a light um, because I like the way that feels. A lot of my meditations have to do with imagining light around you. So that helps me um, to have that feeling. But anyway, so I meditate in the morning before everybody wakes up and then meditate at night before I go to sleep. And what meditation has taught me is to be still and to observe without judgment. And I've been able to take that from meditation practice into my life practice and to observe things without judging them, observe things without deciding in my mind at that moment if those things are good or bad or if those people are good or bad. Um, and it's, there's, I'm losing my words. There's such freedom in that, um, in just being able to see something without letting it have any really effect on on my emotions or the or the day or, or the the plans that I have, and just knowing, okay, you know, being able to look and say, okay, well, so that happened, or um, I see that. Now, what am I going to do with that? How how am I going to respond to that? How am I deciding to process that instead of just you know, go, going off and flipping off and, and whatever you do when, when you just let your anger or your annoyance or whatever it is take over. So I want to encourage you to, number one, um, have a meditation practice because I do think meditation teaches um, more than I can really say in words about self-control, mindfulness, gratitude. And when you come from a really centered place, you don't react. You're not reactive when you're centered and grounded and grateful and all of those things. So the four P's of surrender, I have these uh, written down. If you've listened to the podcast, you'll already know these. The number one P is peace. Surrendering allows us to have peace. It gives me peace when I'm able to put things down. Um, I'm somebody who makes a lot of lists. I get up in the morning and I already know, you know, 10 things I have to do today. And sometimes that busyness or distracting is avoidance behavior, um, avoiding anxiety if I'm feeling it that day or avoiding something that could be a trigger for my anxiety as well, a major life change or a project that I'm scared of, whatever it is. Um, I will get really, really, really busy um, with something else so that I don't have to face that thing and that's not a good thing. Um, surrendering to something, allowing it to come, not avoiding it, um, gives us peace. It, it takes away, I don't know how to say, it's such a, it's a hard feeling to describe, but it's such a positive feeling. It, it takes away fear, it takes away doubt. It requires, it does require trust. 
um, but I'll talk about that in a moment. But there's such peace in just allowing, in allowing something to come, in seeing, okay, so what? what is the worst that could happen? Um, let's say this thing that I'm avoiding, I think it's gonna be really scary, or I think I'm gonna be really bad at it. So what? So what if I totally fail? So what? It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of, of my life or my dreams or my career. Um, I just sucked at something and that's okay. It's totally fine. So again, coming from a place of just being able to notice that and observe it, um, is, it's a really more mature place to be than I have been in the past and I'm excited to be here now and to share this with you. So the first P is peace. The second P is present. Going with the flow and surrendering to what is at this time allows us to be present in this time. And what I mean by that is if you're somebody, and I do this, who romanticizes the past or is always looking at the past or always comparing things to the past or wishing you know things or events or people from the past would show up in your life again, you're missing what's happening right now. And, and I think it's difficult to be grateful for what's happening right now if you're always thinking about either something that used to be or something in the future that's hypothetical that's in your imagination. Now I do believe in dreaming, of course I do, and I do believe in setting goals, but don't put all of your focus there, okay? I think that when you surrender to what's happening, then you're able to stay present, you're able to be grateful, and you're able in that presence and mindfulness, you're giving more to the people around you. If you're a mom like I am, you're giving more to your children by being in the moment with them, okay? You're, you're doing homework with them, then that's what you're doing right now. You're not thinking about something else or rushing through it because you need to do something else. You're just being present in that moment, okay? So that's part of surrender and flow is presence and mindfulness. The third P I have here is power. And this one I talk about in a, in, um, I elaborate on it. I, I'm losing my words today. I elaborate on it in the, in the podcast, but there is power in surrender, even though that sounds and feels completely contradictory. And there's power because you learn from it. Um, and you have knowledge that others don't have yet. And it teaches you to trust yourself to trust your own intuition. It teaches you to trust the people around you, to know that, that they love you, they're gonna catch you when you fall. It teaches you to trust the universe or God, whatever you, you call that. It teaches you to trust that there is a plan for you, that you do have a purpose, that you will land on your feet, that things will be okay. And you release fear by doing that, which I think is a powerful thing. If you are not afraid, you are so much more powerful than a person who is afraid, has fear, can be controlled, is controlled by fear. Perhaps their life is ruled by what they're afraid of. If you don't have that, you are powerful. If you're able to trust, you are powerful. It also allows you to be more productive. And this is what people are talking about when they're talking about be the change that you wish to see in the world. They're talking about this presence, this peace, right? This power that you're then able to share with other people. You're then able to turn it into something in your life because you're surrendering and you're flowing and you're observing and you're not always, you're not acting from an ego place, if that makes sense. Your ego is all about me and mine and more. And when you get out of that and you're able to observe and you realize that we're all connected, all of humanity is connected and we all come from the same place and we're all trying to get back to the same place and everybody's got a journey and all those journeys look different. It really changes the way you see people and it also, for me, um, motivates you to wanna help people. The fourth P, the final P, is practice. Practice, practice, practice. How do you get good and comfortable with meditation? You practice. You just have to keep doing it. The first time you meditate, it feels weird. It feels silly. You can't stop thinking about that song that you heard or how hungry you are or, you know, these thoughts just keep coming in and you think, I'm failing at this. I'm doing this wrong. Um, and you're not, by the way. I still, get, I still get thoughts about Cheetos and things like that when I'm meditating and you just have to sort of learn to push those out. Observe them. You just learn to observe and say, okay, that's what that is right now. And then let it go, let it flow right back out of your head. So practice meditation. When you are starting a gratitude practice and you're writing down things that you're thankful for every day, you'll forget to do it. You'll uh, get frustrated because you can't think of three things that you're grateful for. The way that you get into those habits is through practice. And this is not different, okay? Surrender is not easy. Letting go of the ego, flowing with what is, 
observing something that may be like a major change in your life, especially when it's handed to you by somebody else, it's not something that you have chosen, is very difficult. It's extremely difficult not to react, not to sit in your emotions, right, and wallow in them. I know that, I am like that. <laughs> but the best thing you can do is practice it. Practice observing, practice coming out of the ego and being able to observe something without judging it as good or bad, okay? And just see it for what is and say, okay, I trust the universe. I trust this is moving me to, to my highest good. I trust that this is taking me where I want to go, where I need to go. And see what happens when you start doing that. Start with little things in your life. If you can't uh, see the big things in that way, start with meditation too and gratitude practice because those will help you with the surrender practice as well. I didn't mean to talk your face off today. Um, it's a lot uh, to unpack, and I still don't think I said everything I wanted to say. But if you want to listen to the podcast, I will link that in the description box below. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. Share it with somebody who needs to hear it today. If you know somebody who is not very good at flowing, if they have a lot of resistance to change and to surprises and things like that, share this video with them, and maybe they can get some encouragement from it as well. Thank you for watching. I love you so much. Live encouraged. Bye-bye.